What you see here is the entire line of injector dynamics fuel rails for UTV applications. And you may be wondering, why is there one of these attached to every one of these? Well, there are two reasons. The first reason is fuel pressure. Second reason is fuel pressure. Stay tuned, I'll describe them both. Let's start by distinguishing between a returnless and a return style fuel system. In a returnless system, fuel is pumped into one end of the rail while the other end is plugged or deadheaded. The regulator is located in the fuel tank and it controls pressure by bleeding excess fuel directly from the pump to the tank. A return style system, on the other hand, locates the pressure regulator on the fuel rail. Now it also controls pressure by bleeding excess fuel back to the tank, but the fuel has to travel from the pump, through the hot engine bay, the rail, the regulator, and then finally back to the tank. Now this heats the fuel slightly, which increases evaporative emissions, and so the manufacturers have adopted the returnless style system over the past few decades, specifically for the purpose of reducing evaporative emissions. Unfortunately, this is not optimum for racing applications, particularly if the engine is turbo or supercharged. Before I describe the shortcomings of the returnless fuel system, we need to define our units of pressure so that everyone's on the same page. I'm in the US where we use imperial units, mostly, while other countries use primarily metric units. Now, within each of those systems, there are several different units of pressure. So we've got PSI, inches of mercury, KPA, Pascals, and oddly, there are a few manufacturers that prefer kilograms for, <laughs> I can't even say it, it's so bad, kilograms force per square centimeter. Now for this discussion, we're going to use a unit we can all intuitively understand, and that unit is the bar. A bar is approximately equal to atmospheric pressure, which makes it easy to wrap your head around. So if you're a hillbilly, you know that's about 14.7 PSI or 29.9 inches of mercury. Maybe you use the metric system and you know that's 100 kPa or 100,000 pascals. Or maybe you're one of those psychos who know that it's approximately 10.2 kilograms force per square centimeter. Whatever the case, we're going to use the unit of bar. Any conversation about fuel injectors requires a clear definition of pressure. For the sake of this video, we're going to use differential pressure. Now, differential pressure is simply the difference between pressure at the inlet and the outlet of the injector. It's that simple. And it's important to note that the flow rate of the injector is dependent upon differential pressure, meaning that if we increase pressure, the injector flows more. If we decrease pressure, the injector flows less. To get an intuitive feel for this, imagine applying a vacuum to the injector outlet. It flows more because we're sucking fuel out of it. Conversely, if we apply pressure to the outlet, it flows less, to the point of not flowing at all if the pressure at the outlet is equal to the pressure at the inlet. Aside from the flow path, the critical difference between the return and returnless style fuel systems is how the regulator is configured. Now the key to understanding all of this is knowing that the regulator maintains a constant pressure differential between the inlet port and the reference port. I just did that backwards. This is the inlet port, this is the reference port. Don't edit that out, we're leaving it there. In the returnless system, this reference port is vented to atmosphere. And so if the injector is spraying into the atmosphere, the fuel pressure remains constant. Now the obvious problem with that is that if the injector is spraying into the atmosphere, you don't have a fuel delivery system, you have a flamethrower. On a running engine, the injector is spraying into the intake manifold where the pressure is constantly changing. And so without some type of compensation, the differential fuel pressure across the injector will be changing. And as we've already discussed, the flow rate of the injector will change as well. Now in a return style system, we can run a hose from the reference port of the regulator to the intake manifold. This results in a constant differential pressure across the injector and a constant flow rate regardless of manifold pressure. I find that it's hard to convert words to concepts, especially in the context of a video where the information is coming at me quickly. For this reason, we've created this cool little simulation tool. It performs basic flow calculations in real time, and the intent is to provide a visual representation of injector flow rate as we change regulator arrangements, fuel pressure, and boost. I'm gonna walk through several different combinations, and because this is a valuable tool for visualization, we've made it available online. You can get to it from the link below so that if any of this doesn't click for you during the video, you can try it yourself later. So from left to right, we have boost, differential pressure, injector flow rate, and finally, percent change in injector flow rate, which is the thing I want you to pay attention to as we go through this. Now the slider allows us to change boost, and we have the ability to adjust regulator pressure, 
to switch between different regulator arrangements and to switch between our two most popular injectors, the ID1050 and the ID1300. For this example, we're going to set the regulator pressure to four bar, which is typical for a Polaris Turbo S or an early model CAN AM X3. Starting with zero boost, which is equivalent to manifold pressure at wide open throttle on a naturally aspirated engine, we can see that the 1050 at four bar flows 1,210 cc's per minute. Now at idle and cruise, there's vacuum in the manifold, which is of course negative boost. So let's move the slider all the way to the left. The differential pressure increases from four to four and a half bar. The injector flow rate jumps to 1,290 cc's per minute. And you can see on the gauge to the far right that this is an increase of 6% in injector flow rate. So let's see what happens with boost. Starting at one bar of boost, we see that the differential pressure across the injector has been reduced by 25%. And the flow rate is 1,050 cc's per minute, which is a 13% reduction in flow. So we've increased flow by 6% at idle when we need it least, and we've decreased flow by 13% under boost when we need it the most. And it gets worse. Let's max out the stock turbo, which gives us about 1.5 bar boost on either of the two vehicles I mentioned. Now the differential pressure has dropped to 2.5 bar. The injector flow rate has dropped to 960 cc's per minute, which is a reduction in flow of about 21%. That's ugly, huh? Let's upgrade the turbo and bump the boost to 2 bar. Now the differential pressure across the injector is half the 4 bar setting on the regulator, and the injector flow rate's dropped to 860 cc's per minute. This is a reduction in flow of nearly 30%. Now you're out of injector and the engine runs lean. So you need bigger injectors, right? Well, upgrading to the ID1300 lightens your wallet, gives you 30% more flow, but now you have an injector that flows nearly 1600 cc's per minute at idle and cruise. Does this seem dumb to anyone yet? I hope so. So let me get to the solution. Put the 1050s back in and convert to a map reference return style fuel system. Note that no matter what we do, the injector flow rate doesn't change, and this is the point of a map reference return style fuel system. Now we have an injector that's easy to control, its flow rate remains constant regardless of manifold pressure, and because we're not losing flow as we turn up the boost, we can use a three bar regulator, which results in less fuel heating, greater flow capacity from the fuel pump, and reduced draw on the electrical system so that our upgraded cooling fans might actually keep the engine cool. And now you know why each one of these comes with one of these. Well, you know one of the reasons, but as I mentioned at the beginning, there's one other reason, fuel pressure. What we just discussed is static fuel pressure. What we haven't discussed is dynamic fuel pressure, which is a measure of how much the fuel pressure fluctuates as the injectors open and close. As we delve into this in the next video, You'll be surprised to see how much it varies, how much it affects the way your vehicle runs, and how the effects can be lessened with proper fuel system design. And of course, how one of these makes it better.